Power stations are quickly becoming one of my favorite tech gadgets. They are absolutely indispensable for off-grid adventures, but even in less extreme circumstances, they're just a very versatile charging hub that also doubles as an emergency battery backup. The only issue I have with these devices is that the market has been flooded with cheap Chinese models that often overpromise, underdeliver, and in some cases can have very low quality inverters that can directly damage what you plug into them. So as somebody that has owned over three power stations, I'm going to lay out my favorite reputable companies what I look for when choosing a model, and the often harsh reality and often overlooked downside to all of these devices. But okay, on brands, EcoFlow and Anchor have consistently made some of the best power stations on the market. And no, I am not sponsored by these companies. I've purchased their products before with my own money. And the first thing that I like about these companies is that they are established with relatively good reputations. And second, I've also seen these companies really push the boundary on innovation. Their products always have the latest technology, features, and I noticed that once they come out with a new product, a new feature, other companies tend to copy them. But some other solid options include Jackery, Blue Yeti, but I would only choose these companies over Anchor and EcoFlow if there's a specific configuration, design that was important to me that wasn't being met by the other companies. Now, these companies have a full, sometimes overwhelming range of products to choose from, but the entire power station market can be simplified into three categories, small, medium, and large. To quickly touch on these, when it comes to the small end of the spectrum, even though here the price tag can be very tempting, I find these to be more niche than the medium and large category. And that's because they really can't power any large appliances, and thus they are primarily used to charge phones and laptops. But that does mean that they compete with other more simple portable battery banks. This right here is my favorite battery bank. It's also from Anchor. And I really like how it has a built-in USB-C cable and folding AC prongs, making it a very convenient all-in-one design that can fit in my backpack. Now, small power stations do have advantages like uh, a higher capacity compared to these and a full-size AC outlet, but again, they can only power some devices, and I think a battery bank is a little bit more practical for most people at this level. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the large units sporting over a two kilowatt hour battery capacity. And I would say these are absolutely essential for any serious off-grid living, van life, or other heavy load cases. And aside from the raw capacities, these are the most feature-packed versions from both companies. They have the most powerful inverters, often 240 volts along with 120 volts, and they have the most flexibility in terms of output along with input options. However, batteries are still rather expensive, and the price tags here tend to not be realistic for most people. That's why the medium category of 1 to 1.5 kilowatt hour units are the sweet spot. This range is enough to power most things in your house, including small appliances for an actual usable amount of time. They still have the latest innovations like fast charging, lithium iron phosphate batteries, but they have a reasonable price tag. And that's why I opted for the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus. This thing lives on my desk acting as a charging hub along with a battery backup. And I really like how I can see the watts coming in, watts going out, and it's just a fantastic addition to my setup. Now, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the latest small, medium, and large power stations from Anchor and EcoFlow. At a glance, we can see that in the small range, Anchor has a lead in ports, both AC and DC connectivity, although it's not expandable like the EcoFlow option, and the inverter is also only half the power. The mid-range is easily the most competitive, very similar between the two brands, but I will point out that the EcoFlow does have the best expandability up to five kilowatt hours. And in the upper end, this actually flips with Anchor having the most expandability, along with two extra AC ports and an extra USB-C port. Now, something I have to mention here is the impact of Phantom Drain, which is something that plagues and affects all power stations and needs to be taken into consideration when purchasing a unit. And when talking about Phantom Drain, we're simply talking about the power that the inverter itself consumes when it's powered on. So when it comes to the EcoFlow Delta 3 Pro, this consumes over 1,100 watt hours every 24 hours. And the Anchor F3800 is even worse at over 2,500 watt hours every 24 hours. Meaning that the Phantom Drain here is over 50% 
per day. Now, higher quality inverters are more efficient, which is another big reason to avoid the cheap brands, but also simply larger inverters will consume more power. So if you don't need a huge inverter, stepping down to the medium sized versions and opting for extra batteries could be a more efficient path to reduce the impact of phantom drain. But either way, this has a huge impact on the actual usable capacity of these products and needs to be taken into consideration from day one. Now with that said, I'll leave these products linked below the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.